You'll remember Residence of Fate, you know, it's that JRPG back in 2010, created by the same people behind the Star Ocean series, and then... Uh, the heck is that heavy breathing coming from? Oh, come on, guys! Knock it off! So yeah, Residence of Fate isn't exactly the most underground game alive, because don't be mistaken, most people have at least heard of it at one point, and if you did manage to play it, I'm sure you'll go on <gasps> right now, because this is the game that you bring up to flex that real JRPG gamer clout, whatever the heck the kid's using these days. The point is, you should know what this is at least a little bit, but this YouTube series is called Do you Remember, and Residence of Fate is the perfect candidate because everyone should remember this game, since everyone forgot about it. But before we dive into the nitty gritty details of this game's <laughs> unfortunate Fate to catch you simpletons up to speed. Residence of Fate, or originally called End of Eternity, but that was shot out the window for sounding too cool, is an experimental game made with the intention to break out of the traditional JRPG mold, if you will. Cause Triace wanted to shake stuff up by shaking off a certain something. In fact, Residence of Fate is anything but phoned in because the devs went out of their way to create something truly unique. Going for a steampunk setting, the game focused on guns and mechanical might rather than swords and magic, and created one of the most bizarre battle systems in world maps I have ever experienced. Like for reals, if I tried to explain how these things worked in detail, my hair would start to turn white, your eyes would roll so far back into your head you'd see that little symbol monkey hanging in there, we would be here all day, and I got stuff to do! But the team took time and effort to craft these new systems to bring strategic cinematic combat mixed in with a puzzle like world progression, and for these things alone, Resonance of Fate is really good! In fact, the game was super well received from critics and fans, and if you ask them about it today, they would cream their jeans on contact since this is easy easily a lot of people's favorite JRPG in one way or another. <gasps> So what the hell happened? Cause never have I seen a game this good body flop so fast off a cliff into irrelevancy. Now, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what was the main cause since games fall off the radar all the time, but Residence of Fate's case I feel like was a bunch of tiny things that created this perfect storm of no one cares anymore. I guess one of the biggest factors was that pesky color palette again. Hard to believe guys, but we are not all the pseudo intellectuals that we claim to be. Cause at the end of the day, we are no different than a baby with boo boo keys. Cause flashy colors and eye popping art style grabs attention pretty well, and even though I am personally a massive sucker for steampunk styles and futuristic fantasy, Resonance of Fate just didn't stand out enough artistically. It's got a lot of grays, dark reds, and poo poo browns, you know, those color stoplights use cause they're just so perky. It also probably didn't help that the game's art style and box art looks very safe and generic, like you slap an anime game on the title and people would be like, yep it sure is, and then their eyes would track onto something a lot more interesting. Yeah, now we talking! But word of mouth can normally save less known games over time, I mean it's happened before, but in order for the ball to get rolling, one, people should know what the hell your game is actually about, and two, they need to know how to play it. You see, Residence of Fate has some really amazing gameplay systems, but at the end of the day, JRPGs like to tug at those hard strings, and good stories can carry games to the finish line. And... <laughs> <laughs> I have made a good amount of progress in this game. I have watched all the cutscenes, read the plot synopsis, looked up stuff on forums, and I, for the life of me, could not tell you what this game is really about in a decent amount of time. Of course, that may have something to do with the fact that I'm not very smart, but don't get me wrong, this plot isn't confusing by any means, but it's incredibly disjointed and very anticlimactic. Cause the story starts off with some neato stuff that grabbed me by the pants with that sexy intrigue, dude with a gun in his mouth ready to piss himself? Cool! Weird machine like dainty that acts as God, sign me up! Girl tries to kill herself within the first two minutes? <laughs> Alright, we have to a good start! Hit me with those big feelies, game! <laughs> then the story just halts for a good ten hours, and never really gives you a straightforward goal, or a big sense of urgency, or any decent exposition in the beginning to give you a reason to care. Like, who are we? What's going on? This is the girl from before, right? Why is the city in the air and has a thing for gears? Why is the Pokeball God? And what's up with this guy's hair? Now, a lot of this stuff gets explained, like, way later down the line, but too much comes too late. Late. And what sucks is that this cast is really fun and interesting with good chemistry. I genuinely like them, even though there was no context for Miles. And despite the series color palette, this game can get like super wacky. Like, wacky. <laughs> <laughs> There's just nothing like real meat! Okay, Haiki, maybe some of it's a little uncomfortable, but at least it stands out and is anything but boring, but you would never get that considering how dull the game looks from the outside looking in. But at the end of the day, if your story happens to save all the big plot points and exposition later down the line, you gotta make sure most people can at least make it that far without having a mental breakdown, because Residence of Fate's combat is difficult, but it didn't particularly have to be. Now allow me to explain. I can confidently say that this game's combat is fun, thoughtful, creative, flashy, and truly unique, which is 
beyond satisfying to play, but when you create a brand spanking new type of real-time strategy, it's kind of important to tutorialize the thing to high heaven so people don't feel like they're being thrown into a bullet number hell with PTSD patients. It's rare to see a combat system this complicated be so casual about its tutorial, cause don't get me wrong, it has one, but it's optional, in a side area, and most of it's just reading a vague ass manual and then it's like, okay now do it big boy! It took me around two hours with a team of engineers and a life coach to finally figure out the basics of the combat, and even then I was falling down the stairs with my shoes tied. And keep in mind guys, this is before all the Dark Souls comparison crap, so the game wouldn't gain any notoriety for being difficult, it just makes people pissy! Although, if you figure out the combat, the game really isn't all that hard, but you won't make it that far to find out for yourself. <laughs> Difficulty curve doesn't even begin to explain what we are dealing with guys, this thing is a vertical skyrocket with a copy of the Matrix shoved up your butt! You know how many times I've seen this screen? The font burned into my soft brain! So because of this, many people had a hard time getting far into this game, and I don't blame them. You need an absurd amount of patience to get into this game's systems correctly. So with the story issues and the unforgiving combat, the last thing to seal residents of fates fate, uh, was the tragic tale for a lot of underrated games. It simply got overshadowed under the massive girth of bigger releases. The game sold well for like its first week and then just completely dropped off entirely, with other titles like Mass Effect 2, God of War 3, Bayonetta, Bioshock 2, and then Final Fantasy 13 coming out the same month. Prisons of Fate just couldn't keep its head above water, and the issue stated earlier kept this title from slowly gaining popularity over the years. Basically, no amount of snorkels could save this thing. It's a JRPG after all, guys. They are fragile, gentle creatures that need to be loved and nurtured for over time because they can't take care of themselves. They get scared and they flop over on their side and they can't get up and eventually start starving out before that one creepy dude kidnaps it and holds it for ransom because it's a real game that only they understand. I digress. But to the people who have played this game, they know what joyous little bean this title is. And it's one of those games that really should be admired for going out of its way to try something new. It's a game with a lot of love and thought put into its systems. Granted, not all of them worked out and parts of the game check off a lot of those weird anime tricks but it's still really cool with the neato world map and the pew 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 slidey slidey flashy fighting. You just don't see fantasy like this that often, so I want you all to do me a little favor and just try this thing. It goes on sale on PSN sometimes, and it's also on 360 so you got all your bases covered, and lord knows there's a few copies buried in the smelly pre-owned section of GameStop. Just pick it up, try it out, and see for yourself, cause this might scratch that ever deep JRPG itch that's slowly turning into a rash. Maybe I need to go get that checked out, who knows. But it's just a shame people forgot about Resident of fate. Actually, how the hell did anyone forget about this game? Good God. Lordy, talking about working on the fly. Hi, how you doing, everybody? I do apologize that the audio in this video sounded a little echoey as compared to other videos and stuff. I was recording in a different location. Won't happen again, or at least not for a while, I promise. You know, it's funny, a lot of people have mentioned this game to me that I should cover this as a you remember, and you know, I was, I, was, I was definitely planning on doing it for a long time, but I've tried playing this game like four times, and like each time I got so frustrated with the tutorial and stuff that I gave up, but I finally pushed through it, and now we got the video, so yay, uh, stop asking. But it's because of y'all's support that I'm able to make content, and uh, you know, if you wanna support me a little bit more, shameless plug coming in. This channel is sponsored by Gamefly. Gamefly is a great cheap service so you can rent out games so you don't waste $60 on trash you regret buying. If you go ahead and click the link down in the description below, you'll be able to get a 30 day free trial of Gamefly so you can again rent games for 30 days for free, keyword free. Yes, Gamefly is still around for people who are like, holy crap, this service is still, yeah, Yes, yes. It's like, think the original Netflix, but for video games. It still works. Go ahead and use the link. It really, really does help me out, guys, tremendously. And while you're down there, go ahead and check out some of my social medias. I have a Twitch, I have a Twitter, I have an Instagram, a Tumblr, all the things down below. Go ahead and follow me on those. Keep up to date on most things and whatnot. Come yell at me. Do all the things. Slam a button. I I'm, I'm getting out of here, okay? I gotta... It's gonna be a long week, y'all. All right. Bye-bye.